Okay, now we're going to see how to use the TI Inspire calculator. This is the TI Inspire CXCAS version. Um, also, these applications, most of them are, if you just get the CX version, not include the CAS um, version. But if you buy this calculator, I think it's about 150 at Walmart. Um, and you can use this on the ACT. Um, if it's the CAS version, it can only it can be used on the S. AT, but not on the ACT, at least not currently. Um, the difference is the CAS version has what's called a computer algebra system, which means that you can actually use um, the computer to solve algebraic problems. So, you know, you can plug in and solve for X or whatever, and the calculator will do the calculations for you to solve. Um, but both versions, just the plain CX and the CX CAS, both those two versions, um, do allow you to create documents. Um, including geom uh, geometry documents or documents with geometric um, pages, geometry pages in them. And we're going to work a little bit um, on that right now. I'm just going to show you how you would do some of the things you did in GeoGebra, how you could do that on these calculators as well, which could be useful. Um, down here is the on button. When you press the on button, you can see it also says, um, has this little home right here uh, picture. That's your home screen really. Um, and what I'm just going to work on right now is creating a new document. So that's this one right here, number one. Um, if I select num number one, it'll ask me what kind of document I'm going to add. Um, you know, obviously I can add a geometry document. So I could press three and that would add in a page that would give me a geometry document. Now down here is the menu button. That's very important. And the dock button is really important. The dock button basically allows me to save this document. So if I press dock, you can see that I get a traditional um, file edit view type of menu options that are available usually at the top of any document you're used to working in, like in Microsoft Word or whatever. Um, and file gives you the opportunity to open new documents, save or save as, etc. Um, right now, I will just you know hit save as, okay, and. Um, give it a name and I'm just going to call this, oh I think I'll call it Mr. T Practice. Mr. T and then and I'm just using the letters at the bottom of my um, TI Inspire to type those in and, um, and then I would go ahead and click save. So I can, I can move around by hitting the tab button as you saw me jump from where I was typing down into the save button. Pressing tab will do that. Using the arrow will also do that. I find tab is the best way to move from one field to another. Um, but now I've saved it. You can see that it says Mr. T Practice. There's the name of my file and um, that way I can recover it. Make sure you do that. If there's anything that you're making that you're going to want to submit and keep, you know, put, put, you're in charge of saving that because no other kid's going to save yours. Um, when you create a new document, if there's already a document open, it'll ask, you want me to save that? And I instruct kids not to save somebody else's work. It's their job to save their own work. Um, and you don't know what to save it as. You don't know if they um, want it saved, you know, so we just don't save other people's work, okay? So that's the document menu, and it's kind of down here. Um, we also have the regular menu button right here, and that's the one I'm going to use right now. Um, so I'll press menu here, and you can see that now the stuff that we were making in GeoGebra, like points and lines, I can make them over here if I press points and lines um, using my arrow button. Now, a couple of things. First of all, I'll use the arrow button to come down here and highlight this and use the center button right here to click and select. Um, but I can move up or down using this little trackpad, what they call a trackpad right here. Um, but usually it's better to just press the number. Um, you'll find that sometimes the trackpad's a little iffy, um, and if you just press the number, it will, you know, jump you directly to what you want, and you won't make any mistakes. So, for example, if I want to make a segment, I'm going to make a segment now, I could just press the number 5, and what I notice is that up here, whenever I have selected a tool, like right now I've got the segment tool, up here, this is what tells me which tool has been selected. Remember in GeoGebra, you would have those buttons on the top and they'd be highlighted. One of them would be highlighted. Well, in, on your calculator, the tool that you selected is highlighted up here. So I'm going to lightly move my finger over the trackpad. And when I get to that part, I notice that if I hover over it, it'll give me the instructions for how to use that tool. So how do I make a segment? Well, click two endpoint locations. 
So that's really it. So if I just wanted to construct a segment, I could click one point and click another point. Okay, so that's how I would construct a segment. Okay, and um, you know I could keep doing that. In fact, I have to keep doing that because it's the tool that I have right now available. Notice though something important. Let's say I wanted to connect this point to that point over there. You know, um, let me show you again. I want to connect this point that exists here to that point over there. Well. Um, what I want to do is notice that right now if I'm drawing a new point, I have a pencil icon that shows me drawing a point. But when I bring it down close, it, it'll change to a finger and it's saying select this point. And um, that way you're making sure you're not creating a new point. When you get really close here and I select that point, you can see that it changed to a finger. So anytime right here, it doesn't have to be exactly on it, but if it's on the finger, it knows. And the word comes up point. It says do you it's you know it's got the finger here and it says point so if I click now it's gonna take that exact point that's already been defined so I can click that center button and then come over here and select a new point it was interesting did you notice when I got close that it says point on remember the point on tool puts a point on the segment and it cannot come off later on okay um, so anyway I've connected that those two Notice what happens now that I've connected them. If I hit, you know, if I try to, if I want to get rid of this now, and I just want to get rid of that tool, I use the escape button. I use the escape button to take that tool off. So I'm going to hit escape. The, uh, the tool is now gone. My cursor is just changed into an, an arrow. And that arrow, really what it is, is it's like that uh, move tool that we saw before. So you can see that it allows me to grab things. Now right now that hand is open right here. If you look that hand is open, right? And But it says point. Now it also says tab. If I press the tab button it allows me to change. Oh, do you want to grab the point or do you want to grab the segment? So I can press tab to toggle between them. So you know I'm gonna press tab and say I want just that point. Now watch what happens. If I click and hold, and see there where that blue is, um, which means I could hit control in here, or I could just click and hold. Notice that the hand closed on the point. And now when I move, the point can be changed. But notice that since those segments were defined as connecting this point to that point, that if I move that point, the segment's gonna change too. It all depends on how you've defined the point in the segment, okay? So this is how you would construct things just say on a piece of paper. Um, but you might want to construct some things in the plane with coordinates so you can actually put them where you want them to be. So that's what I'm going to show you next here. So you see this plus page right here, this plus page. Um, we're going to, that is a tool that's available above the dock menu. And because it's in blue, I'm going to have to select control over here and then dock and that will add in a page. So watch what happens. As soon as I, I don't have to hold down, but as soon as I press control once, so I'm just gonna press control once and I pressed it, what comes up is that it comes up and says, oh, you're using control right now and it recognized that. Um, and now over here, it, I can press the dock button, but because control's been activated, it's going to just plus page. It's going to add in a page. So I'm gonna go ahead and select dock and you notice what it did is it added in a page. I had 1.1, now it's going to 1.2. So what kind of page do you want to do? Well, what I want to do is I want to add a graph page in so I can actually get you know the coordinate plane going here. And then I can see the coordinates. So if I go down where it says add graphs, I can select that, right? And I've got a coordinate. Notice it wants me to start graphing functions, but I don't want to graph functions. I'm going to graph geometric figures. So I'll go down into the menu. The menu, if I look, down here there is an option for geometry and that's what we're going to do is we're going to place geometry in the plane so let's say I wanted to place a shape this time you know we've already seen the points and line menu a little bit let's take a look at the, the shapes Ooh, what if I wanted to plot a regular polygon so I could take regular polygon number five and I could just place guess what I'm going to need to do oh if I come over here and hover right, I bring my cursor over the tool it'll tell me what to do it says click the center location or press blank then coordinate so if I want to hit the um, uh, parentheses if I hit that parentheses there open parentheses I can type in the coordinates of for a point and then after that I would click you know um, 
uh, I could I could click to define that first corner and then I would open parentheses again and put in the coordinates for a second corner. But what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to click the center and then I'm going to click where I want the first corner. So And then I'm going to move the cursor to vary the number of sides and when I'm done I'll press enter. That's the enter button down way down here. Enter button right there. Okay, So that's what we do um, that's how we can construct the regular polygon tool. So let's take a look at how that would look as I bring my cursor back over here. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm placing my center. So I'm going to place my center right here and I'll click once there and then I'll draw it out to see how big I want it. Now maybe I'll just go that big. Now I rotate. So if I go to the left it allows me to change. Do I want a four-sided regular polygon which is a square? or five-sided, that's a pentagon, or six-sided. So I'm just kind of rotating my finger, like I'm rotating that cursor to the right makes more, and to the left makes less. And on your calculator, I think you can go up to 16, that's the maximum, and then you start making um, a different shape, which we're not gonna get into right now, okay? So right now, um, I think one thing you might notice, and this is gonna come up later on in the class, is that with uh, regular polygons, as you add sides, the shape starts to take um, a form. You notice it goes from a triangle to square. We are hexagon, septagon, and as we keep going, what is it starting to look like? It's starting to look like a circle. That's a clue. It's looking a little bit like a circle. Okay. So um, anyway, I'll just make one. Let's say a pentagon, regular pentagon, right? And then I am going to press Enter and there is my pentagon, okay? And I hit escape to take my tool off. Um, and now that I've got my, I hit escape again to take my tool off, sorry. Now I've got my polygon formed here. I can click and grab the center and if I change where the center is, okay, it's gonna change that polygon. So this is why it's called dynamic because you can actually, oops, escape. I meant to hit enter there. Um, hit escape again. <coughs> because you can manipulate the, the polygon in the plane however you want. So I can click here and I can manipulate it. Now what if I was supposed to um, you know, put the, put the regular polygon, let's say, um, with a center at zero, zero. So now I gotta do this quick here so you're gonna have to watch closely. The menu button has something in under actions, number one, actions. And if you want to get good at this, you're just going to have to learn to just kind of play around with it. Don't worry about making mistakes. Just learn to play around with it. But down here under actions, there's one called coordinates and equations. Um, coordinates and equations right there. We're going to select that. Now what happens is if I click on anything like that, so I, ho I hover over it, and you can see that the coordinates for the center have shown up. But when I click enter now, um, I can now move and it and those coordinates will come with me and I can hit enter and it kind of parked so I hit enter to select it and then enter again to kind of park the location of it and now if I take my tool off this is the coordinates and equations tool up there so if I take that off I hit escape I can come over here and I can double click on the text and if I want to set that anywhere in the plane like at the origin I can just press zero and then come over here and I double click and then change that to zero and now I have made my um, regular pentagon with this in the at the origin the center is in the origin okay so lots of things you can do you can measure now for area you can do whatever you want I know that the um, distance from the center to this vertex is one two three four appears to be five units if this point is exactly five I'm not sure um, but you know I can measure I can do lots of different things with it okay um, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this right now you've seen a little bit about how to do stuff in the plane and um, uh, go ahead and try making a few constructions in the plane you're probably gonna have to take pictures of them to be able to publish them in your um, binder to show that you know how to use the calculator to create constructions in the plane